While having good running backs is important on an NFL team, it's not exactly the most secure position. And there are certainly several starters out there who are in danger of losing that starting gig. Let's start with Paul. True or false, Chase Edmonds should be the Cardinals' bell cow back in 2021. No. As far as starting roles go in the NFL, the running back job is the hardest one to retain these days. It's so easy for teams to find a capable RB1 in today's NFL, throw in the likelihood of injuries along with the rise of the running back by committee approach, and it's easy to see why more NFL teams are experiencing a carousel at the running back position than ever before. History tells us that 2021 will be no exception. More starting backs will lose their jobs midseason to someone behind them on the depth chart. Here's a look at 10 current starting running backs who are in danger of being replaced. Josh Jacobs 2021 truly feels like a make-or-break year for several Las Vegas Raiders players and personnel. John Gruden is probably safe because of that $100 million deal, but another disappointing year could lead to some starters losing their job with the team. And that might just include third-year running back Josh Jacobs. The idea seems crazy considering he recorded consecutive 1,000-yard seasons, but the Raiders gave Kenyon Drake a two-year $11 million deal in free agency. You don't pay a guy that much money to be a backup. The Raiders will surely give him a good amount of carries, and you can't rule out the possibility of Drake taking the starting reins from Jacobs. Drake is coming off a career year with the Arizona Cardinals that saw him rush for 955 yards and 10 touchdowns. He's also been a much bigger factor in the passing game throughout his career compared to Jacobs. It's not even close. Jacobs only had 53 career receptions through his first two seasons, while Drake has recorded 50 plus receptions in two separate seasons already. This isn't to say that Jacobs will completely fall off the map, but Drake really is capable of outperforming him in the Raiders' pass-happy offense. Derek Carr has gotten better and better under Gruden, and having a pass-catching back like Drake could help him enjoy a career year. So if you took Jacobs early in your fantasy draft, hold your breath, because his days as the Raiders' undisputed lead back could be fading. Chris Carson Carson missed four games last season, but even when he suited up, the two-time 1,000-yard rusher just wasn't that much of a difference maker. A lot of it, of course, had to do with the whole hashtag let Russ cook thing. The Seattle Seahawks wound up bringing back Carson on a two-year deal, a clear indicator that the starting job is his to lose. Carson's injury history alone puts his status as RB1 in doubt. But veteran Alex Collins was a machine in the preseason, and 2018 first-rounder Rashad Penny should get an opportunity to salvage his tenure with Seattle. Even if Carson stays healthy, who's to say Collins or Penny can't take some carries away from him? For Penny, it's obviously about staying healthy. Sure, Collins hasn't been a lead back since 2017, but that year he had 973 rushing yards and averaged 4.6 yards per carry for the Ravens. In a Seattle offense that won't see many stacked boxes thanks to its potent pass attack, it's not crazy to think that Collins could repeat that type of production. Make no mistake about it, Carson is the RB1 for now. But this isn't a gimme. He's gonna have to continue to earn it over the course of the year. Miles Sanders Despite playing behind one of the league's worst offensive lines last year, Sanders recorded 867 rushing yards in 12 games, and he averaged a remarkable 5.3 yards per carry. But the thing is, the crafty 5'6 Boston Scott has also looked dangerous when given the chance. And like Sanders, Scott also produces in the passing game, having recorded 49 catches and 416 receiving yards in his first two seasons with the Eagles. And that was in a very limited role. Scott's speed and elusiveness will not be overlooked by new head coach Nick Sirianni, who should give him every chance to battle Sanders for the starting role. Remember, Sirianni wasn't here when the Eagles drafted Sanders. Both running backs should find more room this season behind a healthier Philly O-line that features the return of Brandon Brooks. If Sirianni gives him enough carries, this could be a toss-up for who wins the lead job. It belongs to Sanders for now, but he's not going to have the longest leash. Like Josh Jacobs, this is nothing against Sanders' talents. It's just there's another capable starter waiting behind him on the depth chart. Chase Edmonds 
In a bit of a surprise decision, the Cardinals let Kenyon Drake walk despite being a great A fit for Cliff Kingsbury's offense. And they're taking a risk here by going with fourth year back Chase Edmonds, who hasn't exactly done much to show he can carry the load as the starter. Fortunately, the Cardinals have a potential backup plan if Edmonds isn't up for the larger workload. They signed former Pittsburgh Steelers standout James Conner, who has looked great when healthy. The Cardinals will roll with Edmonds to start the season, but if he struggles or can't stay healthy, they won't hesitate to go with Connor. There's a reason they brought him in this offseason after all. Mike Davis It's been a few years now, 2017 to be precise, since the Atlanta Falcons got quality production from their backfield. Devonta Freeman was hurt in 2018 and not much of a factor in 2019, and Todd Gurley wasn't able to revive his career in Atlanta last year. And so, the Falcons now turn to newcomer Mike Davis to fill the void in the backfield. The veteran journeyman had a career year with the Carolina Panthers last season, recording 1,015 yards from scrimmage and 8 total touchdowns. He was a fine replacement for Christian McCaffrey, who missed all but 3 games. New head coach Arthur Smith, who, by the way, was the Tennessee Titans offensive coordinator when Derrick Henry won back-to-back -back rushing titles will make it a priority to rebuild the rushing game. That much is obvious. So if Davis isn't able to perform at the level Smith needs him to, then look for fellow newcomer Wayne Gallman to get a serious look at the starting job. Gallman, playing behind a wretched New York Giants offensive line a year ago, averaged 4.6 yards per carry and had 796 total yards of offense. Surely he'd be able to do even more on a potent Falcons offense that features Matt Ryan, Kyle Pitts, Calvin Ridley, and Russell Gage, wouldn't you think? While Davis was a solid option in relief of Christian McCaffrey in Carolina last season, his level of play did fade noticeably down the stretch. If he experiences another drop-off at any point in 2021, look for Gallman to make the most of his opportunity as the next man up in Atlanta. Daryl Henderson with Cam Akers sidelined for all of 2021, Henderson was the presumed RB1 in La La Land. But then the Los Angeles Rams wound up trading for Sony Michelle, who lost a starting job to Damian Harris in Foxborough. Though Henderson had the benefit of playing behind one of football's best run-blocking offensive lines, he only averaged 41.6 rushing yards per game. He was largely outplayed by Akers and wound up losing his job to the rookie during the final stretch of the season. Based off of what we've seen, we're still not convinced Henderson is a capable number one on a Super Bowl contender, which is precisely what the Rams are this year. The fact that they traded for Michelle is a strong sign that Hendo hasn't completely won the trust of Sean McVay, no matter what the Rams head coach might tell us. Even though he was limited to nine games last year, Michelle produced decently and averaged a career-best 5.7 yards per carry. Not to mention that he crossed the 900-yard mark in his first two seasons, even helping the New England Patriots to a Super Bowl 53 championship as a rookie. Michelle enjoyed playing behind a top-notch offensive line in New England. Now, you'll get the same deal in LA. Playing in McVay's innovative offense, Sony could totally enjoy a career year in 2021. Henderson's familiarity with the Rams' offense means he's the starter for now. But Michelle's gonna get his fair share of carries as well. And considering that the former has had the better career up to this point, he's a very good bet to eventually take the starting job from Henderson. Raheem Mostert in case you didn't know, just about any running back who starts in Kyle Shanahan's offense is bound to succeed. With Mostert missing half of last season, it was Jeff Wilson who finished as San Fran's leading rusher. He only started three games, but Wilson looked like a Pro Bowl talent whenever he got the ball, racking up 600 rushing yards and 10 total touchdowns. Wilson looked just as good as Mostert last year, if not better. And for all we know, it might not even be one of these men who finish out the year as San Francisco 49ers lead running back. Rookie Trey Sermon, whom the 49ers selected 88th overall in this year's draft, is a perfect fit in Shanahan's offense. The Ohio State product has a higher skill set than both Moster and Wilson. And if the rookie can show he's ready for the pros right away, San Fran shouldn't hesitate to give him a shot at the starting role. Damian Harris it feels weird putting Harris on here, considering how much he flourished in his first season as a starter. But how many guys under Bill Belichick have actually kept the lead running back job for more than two seasons? Harris would have hit over 1,000 total rushing yards if he didn't miss six games in 2020. So why would we put the Alabama product on this list? Well, it's because rookie Ramondre Stevenson, the number 120 selection, looked like an absolute star in preseason. 
Belichick loves his physical backs, and Stevenson has nearly 20 pounds on Harris. If anything, Stevenson should at least be the go-to goal line back in Foxborough. But if his preseason is any indication, Belichick will have once again found a late round gem to fill his starting running back role. Ronald Jones is second. At this time, it looks like Jones is the starter for the defending Super Bowl champions. In the regular season, Jones largely outplayed Leonard Fournette, setting career highs in rushing yards with 978 and in touchdowns with 7. And that was despite missing two games. But playoff Lenny showed up in a big way for the Bucks in the postseason, guiding them to a Super Bowl 55 championship. Though Jones may be more consistent and explosive with the ball in his hands, you can't discount Fournette's clutch play, his superior ball security, and his production as a pass catcher. It's really a toss-up between who will finish as Tampa's lead running back, but Fournette certainly comes into the season with some momentum after closing out last season with a bang. In September last season, after a tumultuous training camp in Jacksonville, with some stability and a full offseason in Tampa under his belt, he could totally have a career year in this potent Bucks offense. He just has to take over the starting job first. Melvin Gordon the second. After following a disappointing final season with the Los Angeles Chargers, Gordon bounced back in year one with the Denver Broncos. He tallied 986 rushing yards and nine touchdowns, and he surpassed 1,000 yards of offense for the fourth time in his career. Gordon's production alone warrants him keeping the number one job. However, all eyes are on Javante Williams out of North Carolina. The number 35 overall pick turned heads with a phenomenal showing at training camp and later in preseason. The thing about Gordon is that he's not a huge difference maker in Denver's passing game, whereas Williams will get every opportunity to shine in that department. Also, Gordon's ball security is a concern. He fumbled a combined eight times in 2019 and 2020. Gordon managed to beat out workhorse Philip Lindsay for the starting job in the Mile High City a year ago. But this time, he'll be battling a promising second-round rookie that the team traded up to obtain. You have to think that the team will want to see what they have in the 35th overall pick at some point this season. But what other running backs are in danger of losing their starting jobs? Join us in the comments section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time going around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.